Hi, my name is Stefan Kemmer from Vika Instruments. Um, this is going to be a short introduction into our new Scan Assist feature. We'll start with a uh, short uh, PowerPoint, just a couple of slides, and then go into a video showing you the uh, setup and the functionality of Scan Assist. Let's get started. There are a number of perceptions you have to deal with uh, when it comes to AFMs. Number one is AFMs are just too difficult to use and it takes quite a long time to become really professional operating one uh, with good results even just for when it comes down to just basic imaging. Second, it can be quite difficult to uh, get a proper interpretation of AFM images simply because there's just not enough information to distinguish or identify different materials that are on your sample. And third, most AFMs are more or less equivalent. We did two things to uh, change these perceptions. One is we came out with Scan Assist. Scan Assist is a new imaging mode that features an automated image optimization technique. And by doing so, we make it uh, a lot easier and faster to achieve expert quality results. You will actually notice that in the uh, following video, the only parameter I'm going to change is the uh, scan range. So everything else is adjusted completely automated by the Scan Assist algorithm. The second one is PeakForce QNM. That's a new package that uh, generates quantitative maps of nanoscale material properties while at the same time images the sample non-destructively and at very high resolution. Technology enabling scan assist is something we refer to as uh, peak force tapping. And it works basically by modulating the uh, Z position at a small amplitude uh, and a frequency well below any resonance of your system. Um, while the probe scans across the sample, by uh, resonating the uh, Z position, we basically measure a series of uh, very fast force distance curves, fast determined by the uh, speed of the modulation, of course. Um, the peak force of each of these force distance curves is then used as the uh, feedback signal. That, of course, brings us to the uh, data type that we can achieve. Um, we, of course, get a uh, height or height sensor signal, depending on if you have a uh, system with a uh, uh, closed loop sensor on it, you get an error signal, um, the peak force error in this case, and every time you get modulating signals, of course, you can measure also uh, some kind of uh, phase signal. It should be mentioned that the phase you measure in peak force tapping is not exactly the phase in that you measure in tapping mode, even so it's uh, questionable that it will ever be completely clear what the phase in tapping mode actually is, except being a uh, high resolution qualitative signal. Automatic image optimization is, of course, the uh, game changer. Um, the uh, it points out that peak force tapping is a much more stable um, method for an image optimization perspective than conventional tapping mode, and it has to do with the fact that in peak force tapping we actually measure forces directly, uh, whereas in tapping mode we monitor basically a gradient uh, change by measuring a change in amplitude, typically. Um, the optimization algorithm continuously monitors the uh, quality of tracking, um, the noise on a scan line and other parameters, and it uses these inputs to adjust the uh, imaging parameters. And parameters that can be changed automatically are set point, the uh, feedback gain, scan rate, and the limit. If you desire, you can uh, disable the uh, optimization uh, entirely or individually, and then go ahead and change these parameters by hand. So if we want to summarize uh, Scan Assist here, um, the uh, automated image optimization results in faster, uh, more consistent results, uh, completely independent of the user skill level. Because of the uh, direct force control used, um, the Scan Assist can work at uh, ultra-low forces and those helps protect the delicate sample and all the tips from uh, damage during the uh, uh, imaging process. Uh, and being a sub-resonant technique, um, cantilever tuning is completely eliminated um, and that of course makes it uh, much much easier to scan um, and is even applicable to uh, imaging in fluids. There's basically no difference um, from a user perspective uh, imaging in air and or in fluids. To finish up the uh, short slide presentation here, we are looking at uh, an image of um, molecular brushes here. 
a 2 micrometer scan with the insert at about uh, 750 nanometers, uh, clearly showing the molecular change in that image. Um, that was done at uh, extremely low forces. Um, and again, fully automated. Um, the only thing the user had to do is uh, put in a tip, a line, and uh, hit engage, and then select the scan size. From that point on, everything was uh, handled automatically by the system. Now let's start our little experiment here. So we're going to click on the uh, nanoscope icon, the software will start, and the new thing you're going to see is the uh, experiment selector. We're going to select scan assist and scan assist in air. The system will now initialize itself. And then come up with the uh, experiment selected. The first thing we want to do is we want to align a probe. For scan assist in air, we recommend using the scan assist in air probes um, if you just go for simple topographic imaging. It's only one probe for each, for uh, every experiment that you can come up with. We align the probe, then we center the uh, reflected beam on the uh, detector. It's about 4.5 volt sum signal here. The crosshair will mark the position of the uh, tip itself. We then continue to the navigate window where we can move the uh, sample around uh, and we can also move the head up and down to uh, focus onto the sample. You can either use the mouse or the trackball to move the stage and to focus on the sample. So the sample will come into focus now. The sample we have here is a uh, SRAM structure. Okay, that looks about perfect. We changed the uh, scan size. There was an offset in there from the previous user, so we changed it to zero. And then we simply click on Engage. If you want to change parameters, you can set the uh, scan assist parameter settings to individual um, and then you have the option of changing any parameter. The force window here, um, we want to undock that one by right clicking on the window, selecting the undock option. It can sometimes happen that the window disappears in the back, then just get it back by clicking on the main menu bar. There we are. Now we want to select um, force versus Z in the top window and force versus time in the bottom window and we want to auto scale both windows. Auto scaling of uh, images is also a new feature in uh, software version 8.10. Excellent. Now on the top window we see the traditional force versus Z curve, at the bottom we see the uh, force curve in the time domain. The system is already scanning. Um, it automatically selected a, a small scan area and you can see the images uh, without any streaks. Tracking is just perfect. So the system basically optimized itself at this point. If you want to force the system to optimize again, just click on the auto config button in the force monitor window. Now we're going to select a larger scan size. 50 micrometers in this case. And that will be the only thing we're going to change in terms of the scan parameters. Everything else is going to be adjusted completely automatic. If you click on the Auto Scale Update button, the uh, color scale will be updated instantaneously, otherwise you have to wait a couple of scan lines for the system to update it. We also started the scan uh, to go top to bottom and you can 
see the actual line trace in the uh, bottom window. It's clean, it's tracking fine, there are no streaks. So without changing any parameters, we continued through our imaging process and you can see the uh, uh, image almost being finished here. Again, it's a very clean image. Uh, what we can do now with it, we uh, save it after capturing, then we go to the uh, uh, image analysis, we uh, drag the image into our analysis window, we simply plane level it, boom. Um, now we go to our 3D display. We can change the color scale by right-clicking on the color bar. Um, adjust maybe to the more familiar table 12. Then we display it in three dimensions with an artificial light source. Um, change the orientation by either using the mouse and or typing in uh, the appropriate uh, viewing parameters. We can adjust the histogram. And then we are done. It is really that easy. Uh, go ahead, try it and have fun.